Hi, I'm Kristen, and today I'm going to talk about um, the Farmer's Wife 1930s Samplers Quilt. It's um, The book is put together by Lori Aaron Hurd. I didn't say that last time. Um, I'll have the link in the description for this one. Um, so I've not finished this quilt, so this is going to be part one of two. Part two is going to be um, putting all the blocks together and everything when I'm finished. Um, so thank you to everybody who... Uh, encouraged me to keep going with this quilt. It was one of my UFOs, my unfinished quilt projects that I went through last week. And I'd done 26 blocks. Um, I think I said last week that there was 100 blocks, like full blocks in the book, which make the queen size, but actually it's only 99. So <laughs> bonus, I've got one less to do. Um, but basically what the book is, is a whole bunch of block patterns. Um, There's six and a half inch unfinished blocks and they're all different um, and each one has uh, you know the templates of how you you're going to make it you can traditionally piece it or you can do what I'm doing which is foundation paper piecing and then it's got uh, also on another page it's got an illustration and a little letter so um, what this is about I should have read in the introduction exactly what the periodical was but basically at some point in the early 1900s there was a uh, periodical or a newsletter and our newspaper and farmers wives were writing in letters along with um these block patterns and it was kind of like a marketing exercise to encourage folk to live on the farm so they were trying to mostly i think say good things um about living on the farm but anyway um so i've seen people do these all um you know color coordinated they picked a color theme and then they've done the quilt in that way each blocks you know a variation on that uh, I'm doing it more scrappy, so I'm just um, basically pulling fabrics and colors for each block, and I'm basing that on, I'm going to show you later in the video kind of um, how I do that, but I sort of look at this picture and see how many fabrics they've used and then go and pull. Um, and what I hadn't done before this video that I'm doing today is have a look at all the blocks together and see whether I'm kind of, am I really pulling colors randomly or is it, am I sort of coming up with groups or too much pink or something. <laughs> so I'm going to have a look so that going forward, I can kind of more slightly deliberately pick my scrappy fabrics for these. Um, so I'll also show you, so you'll see all the blocks um, out of my table a bit later. And uh, I'm also going to show you my process for just going through one block and the sort of how I uh, cut out the template pieces, how I get myself organized, and then how I sew. And I'll also show you some of my mistakes. Um, so some of these blocks are much harder than others. Um, so some of them you'll whiz through, it won't be a problem. And some of them you'll be tearing your hair out <laughs> and unpicking stitches. So um, the good thing about it is you can pick and choose. You don't have to do them all because there's different sizes. I'm just being obstinate and stubborn and saying I want to do well 99 blocks, <laughs> but um, you don't have to. Um, uh, anyways, but I'm going to show you how I go through and do it. So hopefully that's helpful for some of you. And if anybody wants to join in and do a few blocks with me or um, do the quilt, you can always share on social media and all that stuff. And I will um, try and post my blocks on Instagram uh, as often as I can. So let's get started. Okay, so that's the book that I showed you. And it has a CD in the back, which is where you get the foundation paper pieced templates from. So, but I don't have a CD ROM. So I had to get somebody else in my quote group who has the same book who knew I had bought this to send me the um, the foundation paper piece templates. So if you don't have uh, a CD drive or access to that, this this is the only real drawback of this book if you want to do it um, FPP. So what I do is basically print out a batch of them like I haven't printed all of them out but they come when you get the file they come in a sheet like this so this is block number 43 called hope and it's got the template pieces here so what I do is print out a bunch of them and then I'll like cut out um, this bit so this bits like the little diagram that shows you where everything goes and then it shows you how to join the sections so I just cut that out and keep it and then cut around 
I won't do it on camera, but <laughs> cut around each of these. So you're cutting on the dotted line. You want to keep the dotted line because that's your quarter inch seam that's between the solid line and the dotted line. So you're going to cut out. So for this one, you would have one, two, three, four, five pieces, right? And then once I've cut all those out, what I do is use one of these little clips and I put the pieces in behind. So some of them are much harder. Look at all those little pieces. <laughs> Whereas this one, not so hard, right? So you can pick and choose because there's 99 blocks in the book. And um, if you want to do a smaller size, uh, like lap size, you would choose 32 blocks. Twin size, 84 blocks, for example. So I still want to make the 99 blocks, but anyway. So the next thing I would do, um, so actually I was going to use one. So I have all these prepped. This is just so, so this is like block 30 to 42, I guess. Um, this 43 was this one over here. Um, so all of these are prepped blocks. So that whenever I'm in the mood to make a block, I can just grab that. So I just do a bunch at a time. I don't do them all. Um, anyway, so what I was going to do today was show you the block I'm currently working on. So I'm not actually at 43. That's just me prepping. I'm on 29. Doris. Um, so I have that and I have these cut out. And then what I get, what I usually do is look up the name in the index of the block. So this one's Doris. So that's on page 90 and page 188. So on 188, so the set, whatever the second page is in the index is going to be the instructions for how to piece it if you're just piecing like piecing it regularly traditionally pieced okay I don't ever look at this page because I'm not doing this <laughs> so what I do is I find the first number 90 and then so there it is there so there's a picture of the block and then there's a little each block comes with um, as I said like a a little letter that they've written in so you can read that but what I'm basically doing is looking at the block. And then I look at this bit and I try and figure out, you know, which, which colors they've put in which bits and then make my fabric selection based on that. So normally what I would do, um, so you see the pink is, there's a pink in the middle and then there's these pink triangles. So normally if they've used the same fabric in two places, I will as well. And then, so I would pick three different fabrics for the, uh, no, four, one, two, yeah, three different fabrics for this block because that's what the person who's who's done this has done. Not it would usually not the same colors they pick, but I would pick three because they've picked three, right? Um, so, but I have picked some fabrics for this block already, and I think I might. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it differently or not. So let me see. So what I've picked out because I want to put I want to fussy cut something for this center square. So I've picked this scrap that I got in a scrap bag. So there's not much of it, but there should be enough for this block. And I was going to fussy cut this, um, this little circle out. So I have this, so this is the square. So what I do is hold it up against, and then if I turn it over, well, it depends where the light is. But anyways, I did it. <laughs> I did it there. There, you can see it there. You can see the shadow of it, right? So I can see that's going to fit inside there so I'll fussy cut that out and then the thing I wanted to decide was whether or not I was going to use this, the rest of this scrap for the background where they've got the polka dots or for the pink which would be the same they would do pink and then pink so I'm not totally decided about that but the other two colors um, I think I'm going to go for this pink probably where they have the red here and then this yellow for whichever one I don't so I was, I was kind of thinking yellow would look better here and that this should be the background. So that's kind of what I'm thinking, but uh, I'm not sure yet. Anyway, but the, so those are the three colors that I'm going to do. So I have to decide that because then the next thing I'm going to do is once I've decided which color is going to go which in the block is I'm going to take these pieces and where's my pen? Hang on. And I'm going to write down what they need to be so that I don't get myself all confused when I'm doing my piecing. So for this one, for example, no 
middle is going to be, so what should I call? I'm going to call this teal. Uh, so this will be a T, yellow, Y, and a pink P, right? So I'm going to put teal, pink, 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 pink. Okay, and then I have to figure out where the rest of these pieces go in relation to this picture here. Right. So anyway, so I'm just setting it out. Now remember this is reversed because this is the, what I'm looking at is what's going to be the back of my block and the right side of the fabric is going to be on the other side. So, but, and that doesn't matter for this one because it's symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter. But if it was like uh, some of the blocks are different on one half than the other, so then you'd want to have a think. But anyways, so I think, yeah, I think, and I'm hoping, I also have to make a judgment call whether I'm going to have enough of everything. But I think, I think that I will. So I'm going to call this teal, teal, because that's, if you can still see the book, that's these two points, right? Teal. Teal, 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 and so on. And then these ones. So I have to work out which ones. So the corners are also going to be teal. So that's going to be. So I should be kind of holding it like this so I can look at the diagram in the same way, right? But so it's the, the corner triangles are going to be teal as well because they're that. Right? So teal, 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 teal. And then these. The ones that are left are going to be yellow, right? Yellow, yellow. Now, can I see? Can I tell the difference between my own T's and Y's? That would be the thing. Um, <laughs> the other thing is, depending on what kind of um, pen you use. So, don't use your fabric pens on this because then, if you do iron midway through your uh, FPP, which I do, then you can erase the marks. I also used one of those, um, what do you call it, they're like a erasable pens, if you've seen those. Like they're not meant for fabric, but they're just like a pen and then you're supposed to be able to rub them on the back. If you use that and then iron, it disappears as well. So <laughs> anyway, so next we would go to the machine and start piecing. I'm hoping you can see my setup here. The bit you can't see is the ironing station, but that's like to the other side of the machine basically. So I keep the I keep the book open kind of with those together. Uh, it's it's not like I won't get super confused with this one, but with some there's just so many pieces and it really can get confusing. So um, so yeah, so I like to that. the other thing I usually have is a glue stick just for the first piece of any section. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you might see that I use that. Um, and it's the same for this, except it's not just the first piece in the block. It's the first piece of whatever section I'm working on. It's just to hold it in place. You'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm going to do that thing again. I'll hold this up so I can get my... Maybe I use this one it's on the edge, actually. Um... No, I won't because I can't center that one. There was a reason I chose this one. All right. I'm going to hold it up to the light. Now, the thing that you're never going to see from me, <laughs> probably in great detail, is accurate cutting instructions because I totally freehand all this stuff. Like, I just, there's no rhyme or reason to whether or not I should cut it that way. I do end up with probably more scraps and trimmings, but I think I've got good ways to use all of those. And so I just decide not to skip the bit where you try to fit every little piece in and cut everything out right at, right at once. I like to kind of get straight to the sewing bit of it. So, so. so all I'm doing is trying to make sure that this is pretty much the same width as this. And then I think I'm going to leave the rest of the trimming for this um, to after I've sewn 
because you need to trim as you go anyway. So I'm just going to give that a quick press because it's a little wonky on the edge. All right, so I got my piece that has the flower that I want in the center. And that has to go right sides. So I'm going to, again, try and hold it up to a light and see if I can see where it should be. And that looks about right to me. And then I'm going to put it down. And uh, if you've never done foundation paper piecing before, I would suggest doing something simpler than the farmer's wife quilt first off. Um, but if you have done it before, it's the same principles. So I'm, I'm just putting a little dab of glue there so I can make sure and my piece is going to stay where I want it. And I'm going to hold it up one more time just to double check and shimmy it if I have to. Okay. I think I'm happy with that. Right. So that was D1. So that's the first piece. So D2 is the next piece I'm going to do. So I fold on the dotted line or not the dotted line, sorry, the solid line fold it in towards the printed side of the paper and then take any kind of add a quarter ruler. I just use the edge of, of my, my regular ruler that I use all the time. And then I just cut here, but, and now you could cut straight, but then you're going to end up with a corner and I want to have as much of this left. So this is where I do get slightly economical with the cutting. So I'm going to then, I know I have to do the same thing for D3. And I want to leave as big a place as piece as I can. So I'm going to fold that one and then do my outer quarter there. Okay. And since normally I would then just sew those two, but since I'm kind of here, I'm just going to go ahead and trim these other two as well. Actually I'm not because I'm going to end up trimming. Yeah. No, I'm going to end up trimming other things. So that's kind of pointless. Right. So the other thing I've done, I don't think you can see it on the camera, but I put my stitch length down to 1.5 um, because it makes it easier to tear the paper off afterwards. Um, but it also means you want to kind of <laughs> try and make sure you're doing, uh, you're doing it correctly the first time because you don't want to be picking it out. You can pick it out, but it's annoying. Um, and now again, <laughs> this is where you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. Okay. So I would sometimes cut out like sort of judge and cut out a triangle. And sometimes I would just take an edge, which is what I'm going to do now. So I'm lining up the raw edges on the, and then I'm flipping it over and then I'm going to sew on this line. So I'm just taking this whole piece of fabric. I know, I know. Um, you don't have to do that, but that's what I do. And then start a couple of stitches ahead of the line. So you're sewing on the line between D2 and D1. And get as close to the line as you can. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes your machine jolts. That's fine. Don't, I mean, some of my blocks are more accurate than others. And if people are going to sit there nitpicking, we'll, <laughs> we just won't worry about those people. Okay, so then I'm going to just finger press it for now and lay it down flat and then I cut off the excess. So then I'll end up with a smaller piece that I can work with for the other corners. Just like my least favorite part of quilting, sewing, any of that stuff is the prep bit of it which involves like you know cutting the same thing over and over again or measuring and making sure you have exactly the bit and it's just oh doesn't appeal so I do it this way okay so now I have another wee little triangle hopefully that'll fit there we'll see so there's d2 and so now it's d3 we're leaning up again lining up against so I need to flip and make sure sometimes you, you might want to put it like if you put it a different way, it might fit. So that one, I think I can make fit just see, this is where I might come up short. It's probably not a good example. 
I think that one's going to be short. So I might have to use this for something else. No, that might work. And just holding it close as I can, lining up the raw edges, and then doing my flipping. See, that one did not quite make it. So I am going to have to pick that out and use a bigger piece. I picked that out. That piece is destined for some sort of crumb quilting project. <laughs> and then I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I was trying to like um, show you I could be economical with fabric and I clearly can't. So I'm just going to do it this way <laughs> and then I won't be cut short. So I'm putting the whole piece of fabric on. There's no way it could be too short, you see. This is why I do this. Um... And this is solid, so you do your best to figure out what's meant to be the right side. And have that you have it be right sides together when you're lining them up. I'm not sure if I said that before. Okay. So and then I'm going to finger press that. And then trim it. And again, we're trying to make sure we don't cut off our quarter inch. When we get to the edge of a piece, we're, we're not adding the quarter inch because it's already there between here and here. So we're just cutting straight on the outside of the piece. We'll not try not to cut off any paper, basically, if you trimmed it properly. Cool. So that's that. And then, so that's that. I'm going to press that. And then I'm going to fold. So sometimes you're going to have a couple extra uh, stitches there because you've gone across the line like you're meant to. And you just pull those so that you can get that folded flat. Trim again. And repeat, basically. And I do save all these little bits. These are these will make it into some sort of. <laughs> this is where those three and a half inch um, scrappy blocks come from, basically, from those sorts of pieces, uh, and and the sort of leftovers from me doing cutting things like this. <laughs> but I mean, go ahead and yeah, like if you're good at doing that other way of cutting, go ahead and do that. Um, okay, so that's the center done and then uh, I'm just going to move on to the next one so that was D but so you can start ABC if you want but I, I just wanted to get that fussy cut one done so when I'm done I just put them up there so maybe I'll go ahead and do A next so it's going to be teal yellow teal yellow so this is easy we're just alternating so that's good right so that's not going to fit there and I'm going to try and make this one fit. Because I probably am going to be playing chicken with this fabric. <laughs> because uh, I was like, yeah, it'd probably be enough. Uh, you know, I don't know for sure. Okay. And I am, look, I am sort of guesstimating. Uh, you can't probably see on camera, but I am guesstimating when I hold it up where the quarter inch is there. But you could also fold back and make sure you're measuring to get the the quarter inch over the line that you need there so I'm just going to put my little bit of glue and there's that one and then I've got my yellow oops yellow's in two pieces looks like that's fine use this one and I need a sharp edge on here some of my scraps are scrappier than others Now that doesn't seem like it 
stretches all the way across to me. I want to make sure it's doing that. I'm just moving it over so I can get as close to the edge of the fabric as I can. But I also want to make sure that it's crossing even this seam line here because otherwise you could end up with like a gap in your block. So I want to make sure that it goes all the way. And then I don't know if you can see the quarter inch in the reflection there. All right. And then I would normally flip, you know, and double check, but this is, I'm using, again, I'm using a fairly big scrap here, so I think I'm good. And I'm finger pressing again and because this one is kind of a yellow teal yellow teal deal I'm going to fold it before I trim anything away from anywhere This is where I use that bit. So it shows you how to join the sections E to D. So I'll turn them all over. Find E and D, which I think is the middle bit. Yeah. Okay. So the easiest way to do it, it's going to show you E2 and E3 should line up with D3 and D4. So you've got E2 and E3, D3 and D4, and they need to go right sides together. And then you line them up and then you're just sewing along that line. So if you're not sure, you can open up and check that everything's lining where you think it should. But really, if your pattern pieces are cut on the quarter inch, you should line up. And you can use a pin. Or, no, I always call these pins. A clip. <laughs> if you want to um, and then we're just same as before sewing on the solid line just a little bit ahead. I'm just double checking and shifting because this little corner looks like it's coming off a bit but Then that's joined. It's a little bit off. See? Just a tiny bit. Smidge in there. Smidge in there. If it was more than that, I would probably unpick it. But we're talking about the tiniest bit there. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. But you can go ahead and do that if you want to. If you if you if you end up with something similar. Um, and then I fold back the quarter inch seam and I just tear off that bit of the paper. It should come off easily if you've been using a low enough stitch length and then I will open it up and press open these seams cool so that's our first bit and then it says join B to DE so here's B and so then it's telling me let me see E2 should line up to B2 D3 to B3 and DT to Two to B five, so it's this way, and so I am going to put the one that's already joined on top, so I can just keep an eye on where that seam is, so that it doesn't like flip one way or the other if it's underneath. You know what I mean? So that's the one I would put on top, and then you can also just, if you're not sure again, just check what's that gonna 
because you're there's obviously some lines in the pattern you're trying to line up that looks pretty good to me oops so same thing I'm gonna get rid of this oh my goodness somehow it's gone up to a three two five stitch length I must have hit something by mistake look at that so I'm gonna sew that again <laughs> one and a half I don't know what went on there like my hand must have hit something goodness that wouldn't have ripped off right oh <laughs> so yeah I don't know how that happened anyway when I'm doing loads of these I end up with this paper all over the floor I need to get in the habit of like having a little recycling box for the papers or something like that um and i'm also like i just keep doing it with this paper because i'm used to it which is just printer paper but i have bought some other more specialty paper and so i'm going to experiment with that in i'm not sure when but at some point <laughs> and when i do i'm i'm planning on doing a little video like comparing the different kind of papers for foundation piecing but uh just use whatever your favorite is and obviously i'm just using plain old printer paper for now so I'll go press that one. So, so then C to D E. So D E is these two. And we've got C here. And it's showing me D5 should line up with C5. So I've got that the wrong way around. And C2 with E3. So that's right. So again. I'm going to flip that over and put this one on the top so I can see this seam. Okay, let's see. That's still looking all right to me. So I'm going to take this off again. And there's definitely like two camps about whether or not you think foundation paper piecing is easier or harder or <clears throat> more faffy or less faffy than traditional piecing for me it's because i can get the precision because i'm basically sewing by number <laughs> you know and using the lines and also because of the way you've, see, you've seen how i use the scraps and how i cut with them i don't i don't have to perfectly precision cut each little piece in here because I'm going to trim it along the line so that helps me to to do that more easily but some people they would not want to do it this way so if someone in the comments said that they had made the farmer's wife, wife quilt completely hand pieced and actually there was someone in my quilt group who did it completely by hand as well and I was like oh my goodness and I've only got 26 <laughs> blocks done or whatever but anyway um everybody has their own speed and their own abilities so right so a2 to b5 so i'm just checking on here what matches up just to make sure i'm putting everything in the right place because we are working backwards you know like this so uh, but this is the last one See, that's going to bother me. That one's off <laughs> way more than that one. So I am actually going to unpick this one. I think you'll be surprised, some of you, because I go, she doesn't ever unpick anything, but I'm going to unpick this, and I'm going to shimmy it, So because that's just, I don't like that. Cool. So I picked that all out, and I think I've gotten rid of most of the little threads. Now, this time, what am I going to do differently? So I don't want to do this too many times because look what starts happening, right? Um, this does happen, not every block, but, and then there's some blocks where you're doing it all the time and you're tearing your hair out, <laughs> which is where it's probably good that you can pick and choose. Now, I don't do that because I'm stubborn like that, but, um, so I'm going to try lining up what I want to be lined up and flipping. Maybe I should use right see this is why because that didn't I'm gonna end up trimming all these blocks at the end all right so I'm gonna use a little pin here as if it were the stitches and then see 
get to be even And so what was throwing me off, I think, was this, right? So I feel like that should go up here, but if I do that, then it goes off. And the only thing I can see here is that I haven't trimmed exactly 100% on that dotted line. So that might have made a small difference. Um, but anyways, it's all, I mean, that's not going to be a big deal when I put the blocks together because I've got the whole rest of the quarter, quarter inch, so I'm not, that's all right. So, not perfect at the top, but it's closer here. So I'm going to let that one stay. I'm not going to unpick it again. <laughs> so I'm going to take off this perforation again and press. And there we go. Here's the block, Doris. So it's going to go kind of like that away. And I keep the papers on the back. I don't take them off until I put it together into a quilt that's with kind of like really any foundation paper piecing and then I take this and pin it to the back before I put it back in my um, box that I showed you earlier um, I don't know why but just in case I want to refer back and know which block is which probably I won't need to know that but I just I want to keep that together uh, I suppose then I could check it to, if, I, if I wasn't sure I'd done one I would know right so anyway so there is that block done so the thing that I didn't do um, at the beginning because when I started I just didn't think about these things um, was have a look at what colors I actually was using I do want to do it scrappy that's intentional but I don't want to like be super scrappy and then end up with loads of pink and a couple of red you know like so I want to make sure that I'm distributing the colors a bit so if I've already done like 20 purple blocks or something that I could probably move on to another color you know what I mean so what I'm gonna do now is just lay out the blocks that I have in a kind of rough color grouping so what color does it look like to me um, so I, I don't know whether that's red or green <laughs> it's probably red I'm gonna call that red for example that one I'm gonna call purple that's orange and then I'm just going to keep on sort of making grouping so I can see whether I've got whether it totally is scrappy or if I've got just a pattern of too many things right so I think that on the whole is probably purple probably yellow see that one could be green but I think that's pink right looks pink to me um, that, that could be yellow, that could be blue, I'm going to put it there, just to see what I'm doing. And then there's a couple of blocks that I'm now regretting, so this one and where is the other one? Oh no, this one, yeah. Uh, these two so they've got a lot of white in the background and in the book it shows you sort of doing uh, it shows you using white setting fabric now I don't know that I'm going to use this exact like exactly what they put in the back of the book as I probably won't but I'm gonna put something around the blocks so it's likely to be white right so I'm, could I either redo these two or I'm kind of thinking they could just go on the back <laughs> and then maybe I've got 97 blocks and if I'm coming check, coming up with my own layout anyway maybe it doesn't matter so these two I'm going to set aside because they don't really go in my color groupings I don't think now that again is that blue is that yellow but I had that other one 
I feel like it could go in, if I was doing rose, for example, which I don't know if I'm gonna do, that could go in a yellow row, do you know what I mean? This one is probably more blue, but it could go, it goes over here, it looks like it goes over here with this one to me, right? Purple, orange, definitely purple. Is that pink? Is that yellow? I'm putting it in pink. That is probably blue, but it's got lots of orange in it, so I'm going to put it over there. That has got some red. What do you think? I don't know. For now, I'm going to put it there. That one I'm not sure about. This one's definitely red. I think that one's green. Now, it looks like I put similar groupings together to me. <laughs> it looks like I do dark blue and orange a lot. So that can be a sort of a grouping, purple and pink. So I guess green. I would need to do more green maybe. Um, I seem to be drawn to a lot of purples, but actually like seeing this distribution, I'm thinking it's not too lopsided in any one direction. So maybe it's okay and I don't need to stress about it. So that's what I'm thinking. And then the other thing is probably for later, but it's to start having to think about how would I group these things. Um, when I did the blog post, I'd only done the first four blocks and I did like a picture of them. I'll try and find it. And they actually look quite nice together. So I'm, I'm wondering whether rather than doing the setting this in the book, I might end up doing like some sort of like just pick four, you know, and then but I'll, but they are supposed to go like this is the only thing, but um, I could do it like that. Um, you know, pick some some combination of four, not necessarily that those four, but anyway, and then like. Uh, sash around it or put something in between but then separate that block that grouping from another grouping so I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do but so that'll definitely be part two when I'm closer to finishing but I'm just wanting to have a slight think about it while I'm at the early stages <laughs> um, because yeah I've already done a great variety of things for my blocks so um, yeah so I'm going to try and keep a sort a color distribution not not trying to use too much of one thing or the other that's that's kind of what I'm thinking so I'm glad that when looking at this it's not I kind of suspected it would be either all yellow or all pink <laughs> uh, surprisingly not a lot of blue so maybe I should do more blue anyway so that's where I've got to with those and we'll see how it turns out so that's the finished block um, I'm pretty happy with it yeah not 100% perfect but it's good enough so uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, do let me know if you're going to try this with me or if you just want to see when I'm finished uh, so I can make sure and do that video. Uh, if you are doing the weight loss quilt with me, I am going to have an update, a video update very soon. And I also now have a Facebook group. So if you have somehow missed that, um, you should have gotten an email if you're on my email list. Uh, if you're not, then go ahead and go download the starter pack from the website, the link is in the description, and then you'll get all the details about the Facebook group. And if somehow you can't find it, just email me <laughs> and I'll sort you out. Um, so there's a good group of folk in there already sharing their blogs and getting to know each other. So if you're looking for a bit of camaraderie around that, um, then do come join in. Uh, and if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, please do subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and leave me a comment, let me know what you thought. Thanks for spending time with me.